Okay, I'm going to attempt to explain pony genetics. I have a disclaimer though. Even though biology is my field, I'm still an undergrad. So don't use me as an absolute authority on how all this works. I only really know the very basics of genetics, as I've yet to take a course focusing on that specific area of biology. This is really just for fun anyway, so if you think it works another way, then that's fine. The world the ponies live in is a fantasy world, after all. So, before I get into explaining how I think wings and hordes work for the different ponies, let's lay out a few terms. If you've had high school biology, these should be familiar to you. Physical traits, in this case, wings and horns, are called the phenotype of an individual. It's what we can observe. This is a genotype. It represents a pair of alleles that a certain set of genes possess. In this case, I'm using H to represent horns and W to represent wings. I think it's safe to assume that both wings and horns are recessive traits, and that having without is the dominant trait in both for the species. When we have something like this, it is homozygous dominant. This will give us earth ponies. When it's like this, it's heterozygous, but will only display the dominant phenotype. So this will give us more earth ponies. It's only when we have a genotype that is homozygous recessive do we get a unicorn or pegasus. This is a Punnett square. If you've taken high school biology, this should be immediately familiar to you. If not, then either you're a bad student or your school sucks. First, we're going to do a cross between a homozygous dominant earth pony and a homozygous recessive unicorn pony. This is our P generation. Then this is our F1 generation. We should get nothing but heterozygous ponies, so they'll all be earth ponies. Now let's do it again, but this time taking the ponies from our F1 generation, since they're all heterozygous. This should give us a square like this, producing a 3 to 1 ratio of earth ponies to unicorn ponies in the F2 generation. See, an earth pony can be a carrier of sorts for the traits for wings and horns. I'm guessing that when the three pony tribes were separate, the unicorns and pegasi were both homozygous recessive for many generations, until they started to interact more with the earth ponies. And that's how we have families that can have different types of ponies related to one another, since it's very likely that nearly all the earth ponies are heterozygous. That's just a guess, though. Speaking of crazy MLP theories, I'm not sure, but I have a bit of a hunch that since horns give some sort of magical ability, that there is also some magical ability in the wings. Let me explain. When Applejack said wing powers in Fall Weather Friends, that's what made my mind click. Realistically, wings can't carry a pony. But if there was some magical ability in them, well... Let me tell you where I'm going with this. Let's do a die hybrid cross. This is where we take two separate pairs of alleles, or I'll just call them traits, and cross them. We have our P generation, which should have an individual that has homozygous dominant genotypes for both traits, and one that has homozygous recessive genotypes for both. Then we take our F1 generation, which should be all heterozygous for both traits, and cross them. This is what we get in the F2 generation, and our ratio. But there's something interesting. In the lower right corner, we get a homozygous recessive individual for both traits. Does this mean that alicorns are entirely possible to arise, but are just really rare? There's possibly more to it. I think I remember a post somewhere saying that the mother has to be an alicorn for an alicorn to arise or something. Anyway, I thought I'd point the thing out about wings having some magical ability, because if so, that means alicorns have more magical ability due to that, and in turn can... Uh, live longer? Hell, I don't know. I wouldn't like to delve too heavily into it. I just thought I'd put that out there. So there's my lesson in pony genetics and my crazy MLP theory. I hope you enjoyed.